So this video is not about the fish for once. I've got a lot of male guppies, different lines in here, but they're all males, so they won't cross. This is my bachelor tank. This is where I put all my males that are growing out as I find them starting to show to be male before they, hopefully before they get much chance to pass on their genetics until I can select the males I want to, to breed. A colony breed, so that's why I have this tank to give me a little bit of ability to select um, what I want in the fish. Anyhow, um, this video is about plants, uh, and it's really just a video talking about struggles I'm having with uh, the plants. So in here we have water wisteria or hygrophila deformis, sabwasa tang, a little tiny bit there, I'm trying to get it to cling to the sponge filter, corkscrew veil, I just planted that so the damage you see to it is just the plant melting back as it gets used to my water. It's from it's local from a local hobbyist, but uh, veil, in my experience, tends to melt back really hard no matter where it comes from until it gets established and then it'll start to bounce back. So hopefully that's what happens. I've got a couple species of anacris or elodea or whatever it's called right here. There's some water lettuce floating on the top. Uh, Bacopa. Um, uh, regular Ludwigia. Baby tears. This is the regular form. You can see it's not doing well at all. This cryptocorn I just added. I just added the Ludwigia as well. I had it already. It was beautiful when I got it and it was getting to looking kind of weak. So I moved it in here so it's in shallower water and had more light. Um, see if it make it stronger. The cryptocorn I just planted, so I fully expect it, even though it was submerged form from a local hobbyist friend, I fully expect it to melt back pretty hard as it transitions to its new home and then bounce, start slowly bouncing back. There's star grass I got from another local friend. Um, and I do see, it seems kind of slow, but I am seeing signs of new growth and new roots forming, so that's good. And then um, a Anubis Nana that I got, and it's pretty much rotted. Um, I'm, I'm leaving it in there to see if it pulls through, just floated, floating like that, drifting in the tank, but it's, it's pretty bad shape. So what I'm having is slow, slow growth on many of my plants. A lot of them, you can see on the um, water wisteria, they're getting holes. The leaves are looking pretty worn, um, brown spots, yellowing. Um, a lot of my tanks have hair algae problems. Uh, this one, I pretty much beat the hair algae, but the plants are still not thriving except a few of them. And uh, like this, you can see it kind of curlyish leaves and weak looking, uh, not a lot of good color to them. So <clears throat> I do fertilize a few times a week with Easy Green. I was doing Flourish um, and I just switched to Easy Green uh, last time I bought fertilizer, but I'm out of fertilizer and I have been for about a week. I need to order more. But what I'm trying now is, uh, and for my root feeders, I do root tabs, but I go through, I order root tabs when I order other stuff from Aquarium Co-op and because uh, they have the best deal, the best value on root tabs. But uh, a bag of root tabs gets me one fertilizing between all the tanks and all the root feeders. So, and I've added more root feeders, so it's it's not even going to go that far this time. So I may have to find another alternative. I may try some pond lily tablets and see if that causes problems or if it works out okay to feed my Val and my swords and my crypts and all that kind of stuff. So I do fertilize when I have fertilizer. I'm just all out right now. Um, what I'm trying though now is going back to doing weekly water changes. I've 
30 to 50 percent. Um, I was doing water changes once a week religiously and it didn't seem to change the growth in my fish. Um, and honestly, I was having plant problems back then too, uh, but it just seems to be affecting ones that it wasn't affecting before. Um, my fish don't seem to care whether I change the water or not, <laughs> or just top off. Um, and I, I just raise guppies. I have a few quarry cats, uh, but mo pretty much just guppies. And then I have some sword tails and variatus as well. So live birds that like hard water, high salinity is fine with them. Lots of calcium, is, they love it. Um, so it doesn't affect them. But the reason I'm doing the water changes is because clearly there is a deficiency in these plants. And I don't know for sure what it is. Or maybe there's an overabundance or maybe of a certain nutrient, or maybe it's a combination of the two. And what I have found is that the crypts were doing better when I did water changes. I mean, they're slow, so it's not like dramatically, but a little bit better. Um, the hygrophila deformis, the water wisteria, was growing super, was growing like a weed before when I was doing water changes, and it's just been slowing down more and more and looking weaker and weaker. So again, I think it preferred the water changes. Um, the Valisneria was actually, is actually, uh, in my other tank over here finally really taken off um, and it didn't start taking off until I stopped it's been without water changes for a long time but Valisneria likes super hard water too so it may be that you know the minerals are the calcium's built up enough to where it's finally super happy um, this crypt seems to have been unaffected either way it's being very slow, but it is growing. My moss doesn't seem to care either. I have blackbeard algae going on right now. I'm gonna use some hydrogen peroxide in here to get it under control again. Um, so yeah, and you can see this isn't the best looking water wisteria and it was thriving and gorgeous um, at one time. And I've, I've been, actually, I've upped my feeding. I've gone from feeding once a week, like the label says, to feeding three or four times a week. Um, and when I get new fertilizer, I'm gonna go to every day and do water changes for a while and see if that takes care of the problem. If it doesn't, if I don't get more control uh, over the growth of the plants as far as like health, not control, but get healthier growth, on my plants, then I'm going to get, I guess, have to buy something else like uh, Seachem Trace and probably Flourish as well, just to try and beef up on some of those more minor or less prevalent nutrients uh, for the plants and see if that doesn't fix the problem. Some of the plants in this tank were suffering because like that Cryptocorn was gorgeous and it's really taken a big hit and this Ozalot sword was doing great and it's taken a hit as well. That's from the tank getting too hot. The heater got stuck on, I didn't realize it, and I don't know for how long, but it was almost 90 degrees and it was cooking the plants. And so some of them have been fine, like the Java moss didn't care. The fern, I think, took a big hit. And the um, Volvitis fern didn't care. But, but some of the plants were not thriving or happy at all in that heat. So <clears throat> I've added several new plants here. We've got a hygrophila. I'm not sure the variety. I got that locally. Coarse screw bow, again, same guy, local. And Scarlet Temple, again, local. Not real red, but it was healthy. And I have historically always killed Scarlet Temple. So I may need to look into buying some iron um, or something. I, I really don't know what I need to do to grow red stem plants. I have a hard time with red stem plants in particular. Red root plants, I typically do okay with. Um, green stem plants seem to do okay for me. Red root, red stem plants just don't thrive. By root plants, I mean things that feed from the roots like swords, cryptocorns, uh, valisneria. Uh, this is dwarf sagittaria here. It's not really expanded much. It's, I see one new one there, 
but it, it is alive. It's taken hold and now it is starting to slowly grow out. And my experience with the Dwarf Sagittarius is that it doesn't melt back like Valisneria does but it seems like it just sits in the tank for a few months. And, and then once it's really got its roots going, then it starts to start growing out and um, multiplying. So who knows, someday this might just be all Dwarf Sagittaria <laughs> and Java Moss, but we'll see. Uh, so I'm, I'm trying the water changes because I live in Kansas and there's, we have really hard water, a lot of calcium, a lot of minerals, um, a lot of, um, you know, trace metals and things in the water. Our water's just really hard. So my thinking is, if it's a micronutrients that are missing, or certain mineral or certain metal that the plant needs, you know, if it needs a little bit of copper or zinc or something, then maybe the water changes will have just enough of the trace elements uh, that are missing that it will recuperate. I can't imagine, I do know that I, I'm also short on nitrogen. I, I can dump food in here all day long. I have, you know, by most people's standards, way overpopulated tanks. I feed three to five times a day, extremely heavily, uh, once a day with live baby brine shrimp. The rest of the time it's prepared foods. And then I also fertilize multiple times a week. And my test kits are less than a year old. They're not expired at all. They're being stored at room temperature, so they're not bad. And every test I do, zero ammonia, zero nitrites, zero nitrates. No matter what I do, I cannot get any nutrients built up in these tanks. Um, so my plants are sucking everything out, uh, but they're missing something. And obviously, if I can't get, even get nitrogen built up, there's, there's not enough nitrogen for them either. So playing around, trying to make it uh, perfect, I guess, perfect it. It's not that I don't get growth on my plants or that they're dying, like just full out dying. Most of them end up surviving and slowly growing, but they don't look the way they should. And I, I want them to be healthy and thriving. It's not even about me getting the perfect look, you know. This tank looks great, you know, as overall. Um, the Apanagetan seems to be struggling, but he's pretty new in there also. Um, but I want the plants, I want to know that they're healthy and thriving. It's not even just, oh, I want them to look perfect. I, I want them, I want to know that they're, they're, they're doing awesome, that they're happy and healthy and thriving. So that's the goal, and that's what I'm playing with right now. Um, we'll see how it goes. Isn't that just a massive Amazon sword? So it's big, but it always is getting holes in the leaves and I feed the heck out of it. That one I am absolutely gonna try pond lily tablets on. Um, it is just a monster and I love it and I'm gonna try and hold on to it as long as I can. <laughs> I did just get a 75 gallon tank a couple months ago. It's being stored elsewhere until my wife and I figure out what we're gonna do as far as moving. When we move, I will eventually, I mean, it may not happen right away, eventually set up that 75 and put this giant Amazon sword in there and then I'll be able to keep it for a long, long time. It used to be jammed in the corner of this tank here, this 29. So it's gone from the 29 to the 38 and that was just a few months ago. And now it's outgrown the 38 basically. And I'll have to put it in the 75 and hopefully it can live out its life in there. If not, I will take it to work. I work at a water garden nursery, so it'll live in a pond in a greenhouse if, if it's not gonna be able to live its life out in these tanks. So hopefully I can figure out how to get my plants to grow and thrive. And I, to be honest, I don't want real hard to grow plants. Nothing I have is categorized as difficult. Um, I just want things to thrive and so that's what I'm working on. <laughs>